Hi folks, Pitching Ace 88, we are back with Ace. <laughs> <laughs> and today we wanted to go through um, a lot of kind of the state and future of the channel, but also a lot of updates with the game itself. And let me just say, that ending for season five, that was something else. I mean, wow, like they really, they really knocked it out of the park. I think that's probably been one of my favorite endings for the season, uh, at least in a long time. What do you think? Yes, and it was also, they tied the knot on a lot of things. So it wasn't just the fact that it ended well. Everybody's storyline came to a conclusion and everybody had a story arc. There have been times where certain people don't have story arcs or they hitch a ride on other people's stories and then they just kind of finish. This was every single person had their own little, their, their own little thing that just kind of concluded, which to me was phenomenal. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, I, I think the the biggest shocker for me was when Rita stepped forward and was like, yeah, I'll take it. Because I was like so positive that it was going to be Jones. Like, because it made sense too. Like, you know, you started with Jones, you're going to finish with Jones when you finish with Grimsboro. So I was like, okay, that's a good way to sort of finish his story arc. But when Rita took it, um, well, at first I was extremely upset because Rita has been my number one since, since day one. Um... But, you know, like after a couple days have passed, I, I like kind of realized, oh, my God, she's like, that was a really cool way to finish off, you know, your life. Like, w like, w what's your take on that? Well, to me, it was it was she was the one person that I think didn't have as much play through the whole season. I mean, she obviously had Hector the dog and she had some kind of back and forth and she definitely helped uh, stabilize some of the other characters. But she she wasn't really like a integral part. And so for her to come in and just basically s sacrifice herself, just kind of showed kind of the type of character she was and, and everything that she had done bouncing off of other people throughout the whole season, it just kind of came to fruition. And when it happened, it wasn't like a shock of, oh my gosh, she did it. It was like, you know what? This is the type of character she is. This isn't out of the norm. I mean, I was expecting it to be Jones too, but then when I heard it was her, I was like, you know what? That's actually the logical choice. And I'm not like, mm -hmm. I'm not upset with that decision. I mean, obviously I figured someone was gonna have to die. So if someone had to die, I was like, you know what? She felt the the like the right fit. Uh, you know, you never want anyone to die, but yeah, I think yeah. she was right. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, when you really, like, when you put it out like that, like Rita was easily the best fit for uh, volunteering as tribute pretty much. But, you know, with that being said, season five ended, then we get the big reveal, Jack Archer is back, you know, Trevor's character is back, um, and uh, he's coming back to let us know, hey, wanna, wanna travel around the world in us, except this time we're doing it with, with time, with like a time <laughs> machine. Uh, and, like, at first, like, I was really not, like, I wasn't excited for, like, a time travel sort of season, but then I, I really thought I was, like, we could see so many people. Like we could go back yeah. to mysteries of the past. We could go like in forward in time. Like we could still have a ton of fun with it. Um, so what's your take on season six so far? Well, I've always been very happy with the whole, uh, you know, taking different time zones. I mean, people have talked about space, um, and that was kind of a, you know, I, there's only so much I think you could do with space. So doing it in time, I think, was just a really good idea. And of course, Jack Archer is one of my favorites. So um, I almost like him more than Jones. I like Jones because of the nostalgia. But in terms of, you know, what's my favorite character, it would be him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, but today, uh, <laughs> we have a visitor. Hey, I'm busy. Can you come back here in a couple minutes? Can you come back here in a couple hey, minutes? Hi, Daddy. Why do you get me so Oh, really? Go see Mama, okay? I'll be back in a couple minutes, okay? Love you. Oops. <laughs> he's, not, he's not asleep yet. It's fine. Uh, but that adorable uh, moment out of the way, um, we wanted to talk a little bit about some of the uh, more recent information from Pretty Simple uh, and some of the new character releases. So let's, let's look at that real quick. So uh, the first one that we had was this character named Kai Milano. Now remember, the year is 2029, so these guys are uh, actually 10 years older than they, they would be in present time. So he's actually 23. Um, but he's the tech expert, uh, he grew up in Hawaii, always loved tinkering with things and became an engineer. Not your average tech nerd, gentle and patient and will always defend someone from a bully. 
and he likes complex electronics, um, dramatic tell tell not I'm, I still don't know how to pronounce that word, and cute animals. Telenovelas. Telenovelas, okay. Yeah. And um, his catch for er, his his signature quote is, uh, "You see, all this engine really needed was a loving touch." So he he just sounds like he sounds like a kind of like a, like a hippie who became a tech expert a little bit. Yeah. I mean, again, the, it's very it's very Cal Drogo and um, oh, I forgot the guy's yeah. name, but basically Aquaman. It, they had to have gotten after him, and he kind of has that attitude. Um, in you know, a lot he kind of his... looks like he kind of looks like Gabriel with a beard. <laughs> I kind of realized that <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, yeah. Um, so that was the first released character. Then we had Janice Rivers, uh, the coroner, so seventy-three years old, sixty-three hour time, um, a hippie in her youth, was only a ha has only a hazy <laughs> recollection of her twenties. Uh, she's open-minded, warm, honest, loves to reminisce about her past. She likes knitting and baking, but. She does it in the morgue, which makes people reluctant to try her cakes. And her quote is, You youngsters can't shock me. Not after that one week I had in 1973. And if I can just take a guess, I have a feeling we're going to figure out what that one week in 1973 was about. J just a guess. Yes. Um, I would agree. Yeah, but honestly, I, I this kind of sounds like a good corner. Like, it, it sounds like the rocky. stereotype. Yeah, a little bit. It they're, they're I think they're taking her back to Roxy and realistically if you ask most of the community they Roxy's probably one of their favorite coroners from Pacific mm -hmm. Bay just yeah. because she was completely out there um, mm -hmm. and, and fun it, it, you know she kind of weirdly enough would remind me of like Martine's mother uh, yeah yeah yep yeah. that sounds yeah. like it all right so next we have Orlando Ordoloff aka um, oh, what was his name RuPaul yeah, there we go. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Pretty much. 55 years old, yes. 45 our time. Uh, from humble beginnings, now a renowned historian and fashion expert. He's charming and spirited, always fashionable, likes to gossip. He likes traveling, gambling, and visiting aquariums, and he finds them inspiring. Okay. And, um, he's... <laughs> oh boy, that's gonna be a great impression. <clears throat> Darling, you do not want to go out wearing that. <laughs> uh, so I'm already in love. I love this guy. Uh, what do you think? He, he is going to be a character, I feel. Um, and, you know, not only do they take, you know, RuPaul's likeness, mm -hmm. it sounds like they're going to take some of the personality, and that's going to be a lot of fun because um, just at least in pop culture, I think a lot of people at least have seen him, even if they don't watch the show, they've at least seen him a lot. Mm -hmm. So they kind of know that demeanor. So that'll be uh, kind of fun. I'll Maybe I'll brush up on it and I'll see if I can do a voice or something like that. We'll see. I, I, I don't know if yeah. I can, but we'll try. We'll, we'll see. And finally, at least the last teaser at the time of us recording this, is Theodore Moon, the lab chief. So he's actually just about my age, uh, my time. He's 18 our time, so he's 28 their time. Um, from a wealthy family, only working because he loves science. He's very kind, but also a bit spoiled, uh, clueless about the real world without realizing it. He likes golf, classic sci-fi, and gourmet food. And by the way, this next quote is my favorite quote of all time. Isn't our time machine amazing? It's almost as big as the left wing of my parents' mansion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that kind of that kind of sounds like if Jake Paul were a time traveler. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't know, but he, he seems he seems cool, but I, I have a feeling like that's going to be a very annoying personality moving forward. I, th I think he's going to be I think he's going to be interesting. Um, we haven't had that many people uh, on our team that have that have really come from wealthy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I feel like in Mysteries of Past, we had at least one, um, but usually most people were working um, class people. So it'll be it'll mm -hmm. be interesting to see how that dichotomy and dynamics work with with him yeah i definitely agree so those are the characters for uh season uh season six at least the ones that have been announced obviously you know we have jack archer um but let's get into the big announcement for season six and in case you guys have not heard pretty simple has contacted us and they are going to be sponsoring us for season six of criminal case um so basically how it works is they're just going to ensure that we have enough cash to play uh, the game, and if at any point we need a refill or something, even during live streams, uh, they said that they'll hook us up. But first off, I I, I have to say, I was positive that this would not happen. Um, so <laughs> you know, I, I'm extremely happy, and uh, you know, a huge, huge thank you to Pretty Simple for helping us uh, ensure that we can continue 
to play the game. Even if it's just for one more season, it's still, you know, we get the final season uh, to do it. Um, but also, uh, there is a little bit of a conundrum as of right now. Um, as most of you guys know, we have a second channel called Secret Agent Ace 88, and this is where we generally do the live streams for a uh, criminal case. Um, and a little while ago, that's where we had moved all the criminal case content to. Now, that was originally a, a test, and it, it worked out fairly well at the beginning, and it kind of slowed down over time. Um, but we wanted to talk about kind of the state of the channel and where criminal case will go. Um, because the question uh, uh, up in the air right now is, should we continue to make criminal case content on Pitching Ace 88? or should we move it over to Secret Agent Ace 88? And I would like, um, Trevor and I would like to give arguments for both uh, sides of the pond. Now, uh, personally, Trevor, what, what is your take uh, on where the content should go right now? Well, I'm always gonna go probably side with the Pitching Ace 88 for mm -hmm. the actual videos themselves, just because people that are going there are really going for you know the content themselves. Secret Agent Ace though, uh, that basically ties straight into the Twitch channel name. Um, so that to me goes one and one one to one and hand in hand. So, um, but it'll be you know interesting to see where you guys do. I mean, for those people that are watching this, how many of you guys are subscribed to both channels, and which one's the priority in terms of your news feed? You know, which one do you get more often? Um, most times we release these on a on a daily or a weekly. It's always Thursday. So if you guys are just always used to just going to you know pitching ace 88 or worse you know secret agent ace 88 you know just let us know um and we're going to kind of take all that information see what we want to do because we, we want to reach the, the most amount of people um with with this uh content and we want you all to be w there with us through season six and the easiest way for you guys to find it that's the way that we're gonna go yeah most definitely you know of course i will you know, Trevor does kind of make the final decision here, so I will go with whatever the fans and whatever Trevor uh, wants to go for for season six, and um, I'll be there on the sidelines, kind of cheering you on. In fact, for case one, I might actually, I might actually be there physically. Um, but we'll find out soon. It just depends on when the case is released because I, I do have, you know, things to do. But um, in a little bit more detail for as to why pitching Ace 88 and or Siege Red Agent Ace would be uh, good. Um, deciding factors for the channel. Um, Pitching Ace 88 obviously has the bigger platform for criminal case content. You know, we do have a, a, a heavier fan base on Pitching Ace 88. And with Secret Agent Ace 88, uh, the content is a lot more directed towards criminal case content. So we would have a lot of the content, like the channel is already a criminal case channel. As for Pitching Ace 88, you know, over the years, it's been uh, you know, we've had lots and lots of games on the channel, and of course, you know, we can still keep Criminal Case on the channel, but there's also a little bit of a diversion between the fan bases of those games, so it might also be good to let that fan base have its own channel, um, and at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world if those fan bases have to collide, but it might be a little bit more convenient for the fan bases to have their own platforms. Now, um, we want to hear from you guys. Leave a comment below. Which channel would you rather have Criminal Case content on uh, with those factors in mind? Um, you know, it, it's not, it's not going to be like a majority vote or anything. We want to take your guys' opinions very seriously. So just let us know in detail what you guys would like to see. I think Trevor has one more thing. <laughs> so just one more thing. So if you guys have if you guys made it to this part of the video, you guys are 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 well invested in this. And Kian mentioned that he's going to be um, hopefully on at least the first ca first case, maybe the second case based on his scheduling for season six. But we're going to start putting um, the fans in some of the mm. uh, cases. So uh, right now, and if you guys were on the live stream and you heard me talk about it. Um, I'd like to do kind of a dual um, commentary through some of these cases. Um, so in order to do that, the, the information will be in the Discord channel. So if you guys aren't part of Discord right now, definitely um, make sure that you are a part of it. Um, I'll be setting up uh, testing so that we do a little bit of testing before the actual, you know, go live. Um, but the idea with that is that there's going to be a, you know, me as, as the main commentator, but we're going to do what we've done in the past with Chiara, with... Um, with Jonathan, with uh, with a lot of the people that were on it. Maddie was on it, I know. Um, and so I kind of want to get the people that watch all the time and some of the people that comment all the time um, also in so we can have that kind of back and forth and you guys can see, you know, other fans and we can all kind of enjoy it together. So 
Keen will definitely be uh, the first one, and he'll probably be in it repeatedly. Um, yeah. But we're gonna we're gonna start having additional people as well. Um, but in order to do that, you got to add the Discord channel, um, and we'll have a link of that down below. And then we'll give further steps on how you can apply, and you know we'll set up some schedule and some timing for for you guys. Yeah. So uh, I hope you guys are excited for that because we you know our goal is always to get in touch with the community and get you guys involved. Um, so. Uh, I, I'm very excited to, you know, have a lot more people jumping on the cases. I can't wait to see how people are going to pull off Orlando's voice, especially you, <laughs> Trevor. <laughs> uh, but that, that should be fun to watch. But with that all said and done, um, I think it's time to sign off. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the community. And that being said, it's Pitching Ace 88. Over and out.